Today we're talking about comparison. So why is comparison considered the thief of joy? Well, thanks again for tuning in. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Come on in and catch this vibe. So when we think about comparison, what is it? Comparison can be defined as an examination of two or more items to establish similarities and dissimilarities. It can also be considered the representing of one thing or a person as similar to or like another, the quality of being similar or equivalent, or the act or process of comparing. When we think about in the instance of twins, oftentimes individuals will try to compare what's different about them so they can quickly identify who's who. So comparison in and of itself is not a bad thing and is oftentimes natural. So when we think about it being natural, there are studies that have indicated that about 10% of our thoughts involve some form of comparison. And so not all comparison is a bad thing, but again, anything, it really just depends on how you use it. So when you think about psychology, there is something called social comparison theory. It is a theory by Leon Festinger, a psychologist who theorized that individuals will determine their own social and personal worth based on how they stack up and or compare against others. And so when you think about comparing ourselves against others. I loved this graphic here that said, you can do anything, the t-shirt that she's wearing. Because oftentimes when we compare ourselves with others, either we feel like it's something that we can do, or in some cases, we feel like it's something that we may not be able to do. And so that's where it's important to have balance when you think about comparison. So how does it help? But also how does it hurt? When you think about how comparison helps us, it can motivate us to achieve our goals. It can help us push forward into purpose because we look at where we are in comparison to where we want to be. When we think about promoting positive self-image, we may see other people that look like us and think to ourselves, you know what? If they can do it, I can do it too. But on the flip side of that, hence the reason balance is important, is that it may promote individuals becoming more judgmental, biased, or even overly competitive or having a superior attitude to their peers because it becomes this unhealthy competition where it encourages a negative self-image because now you're comparing yourself and you may be feeling feelings of jealousy or envy because you don't have what someone else has. Hence the reason Theodore Roosevelt said, comparison is the thief of joy. And I thought that this image to the right symbolizes so much. When you see other people in a relationship and you want a relationship, the Bible reminds us that that is coveting. We want something that we don't have, or we want something that someone else has. And this is, I think, the premise of when we think about comparison being the thief of joy, you could very well be happy. But if you see that other person in a relationship and you want a relationship, now that very thing that is meant maybe for you, but just not right now, can make you sad because you're comparing. So now let's take a look at a few scriptures with regard to comparison. So in Galatians 6, verses 4 through 6, it says, each one of us should test our actions. Then they can take pride in themselves alone without comparing themselves to someone else. For each one should carry their own load. Nevertheless, the one who receives instruction in the word should share all good things with their instructor. So we have to test our own actions and carry our own loads. We have to be able to go back to our creator and say, I need instruction for my life. Where is it that you want me to be at this time in my life so that I'm not comparing myself unhealthily, essentially? You're, you have these unhealthy comparisons looking at other people, but we're reminded in the word that we should look at ourselves and test our own actions because we have to carry our own load. The next scripture that I want to highlight is in Galatians 1. God or man, whose approval stands? In Galatians 1, it reads in verse 10, am I saying this now to win the approval of people or God? Am I trying to please people? If I were still trying to please people, I would not be Christ's servant. 
So yesterday I posted something with regard to uh, following in your God-given authority, doing what God told you to do, regardless if other people agree with you. And oftentimes we may feel like, hey, you know, I'm in agreement with God, but we're trying to please people. So the word reminds us that being double-minded, essentially we can't be. And even for myself, that's something that I realized in hindsight was a struggle because I sought the approval of people. And in doing so, it stopped me from doing what I'm doing now. It took me a long time to actually focus on my goals because it goes back to whose approval are we seeking? Are we approve, Are we asking for God's approval or do we want people to approve us? We are also reminded in Romans 12 to not be conformed. And so when we think about that approval, it says, do not be conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. And when I read this, I like to think of what is the will of God for me? What is good for me? What is acceptable for me? What is perfect for me? And I encourage you to replace that with what is good for you? What is the will of God for you? What is acceptable? What is perfect for you? So then you are no longer comparing yourself to other people because we are all branches on God's tree. If he has a purpose for you, he has a purpose for me and vice versa. So when we realize that, the sooner it helps us to not have an unhealthy balance when it relates to comparison. And yet, even in this, we must still be humble. So when we realize that, hey, I'm different, we still must maintain a level of humility. In Philippians 2, 3, and 4, it says, do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourselves not looking to your own interest, but each of you to the interest of others. And so it's really looking at our motives. Why do we do what we do? Are we doing things to pump ourselves up or are we doing things to help other people? I will be honest, when I started Confidence Centers of America a long time ago, I thought it was to help women see their value and really start to love themselves and see themselves how God sees them. But it wasn't as much focused on the God aspect, it was focused on how we see ourselves. And that was based on my own insecurities that I allowed people to push on me based on their limited perspective. And so now fast forward, I realized that God was trying to show me something else. He was trying to show me that you can be confident, but what I want you to be is confident in me. I want you to be confident in Christ. So in the next chapter, Philippians 3, 3, it says, for we are the circumcision. We've been cut back, which worship God in the spirit and rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh. So that confidence that I thought I was going to be focused on to help people be able to achieve their goals and and do the things in this life is so much bigger than that. Now I realize that it's broader. It's about confidence in God, restoring confidence in who he says we are, not who the world says we are, not what other situations have made us believe about ourselves or what people have said to us and or about us. It's allowing God to circumcise our hearts, to cut back those things that have hindered us from being who God called us to be so that our confidence can be restored in Christ and that we would be reminded at the end of the day that we are fearfully and wonderfully made. In Psalm 139, 14, it says, I praise you for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works. My soul knows it very well. And when your soul, your spirit, and your mind align, the amount of power that we can have in truly having our confidence restored. So thank you so much for tuning in today. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe because you never know who else needs to come in and catch this vibe. Be blessed.